now that we looked at Lynet, let's have a look at AlexNet, which is a considerably more advanced network, and to see how well it works in practice. First thing we need is to import the network, the, all the MXNet tools and so on. Okay, so that's exactly the same as before. We just get, you know, import Gluon and DRay, losses, data iterators, and then some other convenience routines. Okay, and then we need to define the network itself. So here's again a simple sequential network. We add convolutions, max pooling, another convolution, another max pooling, then three successive convolutions, then something to reduce the dimensionality again, again with pooling, and then the infamous two dense layers and the last dense layer to map it to the 10 dimensions because we're not using ImageNet but just Fashion MNIST. The main reason for that being that training on ImageNet would take too long for a demo, whereas on Fashion MNIST we can do it nicely. So remember, we have a lot of channels. Initially we've got 96, then 256, then 384, and only then in the end we climb down to 256 and then come the infamous dense layers. So let's have a look at what this looks like in practice. So I'm going to send some data that's of 221, 224 by 224 pixels size. I'm going to send it to the network. And lo and behold, I get for the first layer, you know, 54 by 54 dimensions, 96 channels. Then I get 26 by 26, 256. Then I perform max pooling again, so I reduce things. And then come the conf layers, right? Then I have another pooling operation here, which reduces it to five by five. And then I have my dense layers. So this is what will lead to a fairly significant amount of parameters, which then need to be stored and computed over. And in the end, I get 10 classes. So that's AlexNet, but in the flavor of 10 outputs. Okay. First thing that I need then is my data iterator and that data iterator looks a little bit different from what we saw before because we want to actually resize the images to 224 by 224 pixels. So for that, I need to use data transformers. So these are different from the transformers as a layer, but they are just transformers for the iterator. So what I do is I use data, well, basically Gluon data vision transformers. So one of the operations they offer is to resize. I can do other crop and other operations, but this resizes it to, in this case, 224 by 224. Then I turn it into a tensor such that I can actually apply any operations to it. And for efficiency, I compose it. Now I need to define my data sources. That's just the Fashion MNIST training and test iterators. And then I start composing my now multi-threaded. So number of workers is zero if it's on Windows. Otherwise we need four threads because Windows doesn't like multi-threading in this case quite so much. And so now I have basically the MNIST data, training data. I transform that first. And then I need to pick a mini batch size and tell it to shuffle things. And that's basically what my data loader does. So that's that. I get exactly the same thing for test data. So I have this test iterator. And in the end, well, I basically return my iterators. That's what gets me the data. Now the training scripts are exactly identical to what we saw before for Lynette. I've just pulled it up here again for reference. Um, in the Lynette case, we saw it in detail, but basically to compute the accuracy, you move the data onto the GPU as in context, right? And then you check on that device whether the largest value of the output, whether the, that coordinate matches the coordinate you would like and you just aggregate. Now for training, <clears throat> you do a very similar thing as before. 
you just you know iterate for number of epochs over the data set you then go and you know reset some bookkeeping because you do that initially and then as you go over the training data you go and compute the output of the loss so that's network the output of the loss function you then compute the gradient L dot backward and you take an update step so that's fairly straightforward now then in the end you just convert things into scalar and you report it so this is fairly straightforward note that as we iterate over the data set we compute the training error ongoing as we pass through so whereas for the test set we compute the test accuracy after we've done one pa that pass through the data set that'll actually become interesting and relevant as we go along so let's see how that works and now it takes a little bit longer so remember before that it was like two and a half seconds to go over the data on Lynette and just for reference on my laptop this would take around one hour to take one pass through the data set on the GPU well now it takes about 18 seconds to do one pass through the data set and if we have five seconds so we have to wait for about a minute or so until we see all the results um, one fairly important detail here so the learning rate now is 0.01 so that's considerably smaller than what we had before that's due to the fact that as we have a more complex network the learning rate needs to be smaller in order to iterate through the data nicely and to make sure that we don't diverge the other interesting thing is that our training error or rather training accuracy here that that accuracy is lower than our test accuracy quite systematically and that seems odd right you would expect that the training error is large is smaller than the test error and it's the other way around that's due to the fact as mentioned that we compute the training accuracy as we pass through the data set so as our classifier gets better well of course you know you would expect also the training accuracy to get better but since we averaged over the entire pass through the data set and that's a non-trivial part of the accuracy calculation whereas the test accuracy only computed at the end of one phase you get that the training accuracy is an underestimate for the accuracy that you'll see later and okay after five passes we get an error of around 13 percent so that's not too bad in order to do better we'll need considerably more advanced network architectures and we'll do that in the following